For the word of God is alive and active. Its entrance gives light and understanding to the simple. Welcome to the official sermon tape of Christway Church, Treasure House. As you listen, may God's blessings pour over you abundantly. Now, here's the word for today. It's all about you. It's all about you. Come on, lift your voices. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Can you testify? Come on, say. It's all about you. It's all about you. thanks and pray. Everything about our life is all about you. And we acknowledge you this morning. And everybody says a loud amen. amen. Your amen can be louder than that. Say a loud amen. amen. Can you appreciate the choir in the house? Glory to God. And before you have your seat, I'd like you to look at the scripture that came to my heart this morning. Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19. It's good to see you in church. Genesis chapter 19. Glory to God. Genesis chapter 19 verse 1. Genesis chapter 19 verse 1. Amen. Can we read it together? Everybody read. Want to go? And there came how many angels? To where? Are we in Sodom? Are we in Sodom? (laughs) No, we are not in Sodom. (laughs) Glory to Jesus. I said we are not in Sodom. And it's not even time right now. And Lot sat at the gate of Sodom. And Lot seeing them, what did he do? He rose up to meet them. And what else did he do? He bowed himself with his face towards the earth. Let me show you another one. Go to chapter 18, verse 1. Glory to Jesus. Do you have discernment this morning? I said, do you have discernment this morning? We have angels in our midst. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> See, God sends men to us as angels. You must learn to receive men as angels. Glory to Jesus. Can we take verse 1 and then verse 2? And the Lord appeared unto Abraham in the plain of Moriah, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. So this time around, probably similar to now. Go to the next verse. Glory to Jesus. And he lifted his eyes. Can somebody lift up their eyes this morning? <laughs> and look, and lo, three men. He said the other one, two men. This time around, three, three men walked into this building this morning. Two physical, one, one, one invisible. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. <laughs> and he ran to meet them at the tent of the same thing that the Lord did. is the same thing that Abraham did. Glory to Jesus. Can we welcome Pastor Bukola Komolafe and Pastor Damilola Majekono. If you are shouting, your shouts do not look like. I'll fire you this morning. You did. <laughs> I celebrate you, sir. I celebrate you, sir. Thank you for your love. It, it, it's amazing they are here this morning. It has to be love. Glory to Jesus. And it has to be sincere from the heart because they don't have to be here. They don't have to be here at all. At all. They are my fathers. I met them on this job. <laughs> and uh, my life is not the same. Glory to Jesus. They are friends to my elder brother. Do you know my elder brother? <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a small boy. <laughs> Please help me appreciate Pastor Bukala and Pastor Damlola. They are not a Ife, but they give us massive support from their locations. Glory to Jesus. They are medical doctors. Can you appreciate Jesus <laughs> in their life? And they are men of God. Glory to God. Pastor Damlola came all the way from the UK. Glory to Jesus. Pastor Bukala is doing wonders in the Kondo State. Glory to Jesus. We see the mighty things uh, on the page and it's massive. Thank you, sir. I push your Lua. Everybody is okay. I push your Lua. That's okay. I'm marrying you. Can we appreciate all our online viewers this morning and celebrate them? Thank you for joining us. We celebrate you. Glory to God. Are you aware it's been like two months I've stood in front of you to preach? <laughs> I'm thinking I'm rusty this morning. Two, two months I've not, I'm not preached there. Two months. I'm telling you. <laughs> So I want you to thank and not 
other two angels for me that have been mighty in this house. Can you celebrate the ministry of Minister Allah and Minister Abiodo? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Can you celebrate the admin? Can you celebrate all the ministers? Can you celebrate yourself? When, when a child's mother is not around and the child still fears well, I celebrate you, I congratulate you. They told me to take a break. I said, no, I, I'm back now. And uh, if I need a break, I'll take it later. I may be strong, I'm tired, but uh, we keep the work uh, going. Somebody give the Lord a shout of prayer. So I said that to say, if I'm rusty this morning, can you take me like that? <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Have your seat in God's presence. Let's get started quickly. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Pastor Bukola and Pastor Dambula will be doing justice to the Holy Communion. So don't worry. They are my guys in this work. And we are blessed to have them. Hallelujah. Last week, Pastor Ola was there to set the ball rolling on a discussion of cultivating the presence of God. Glory to God. You see, when God sends a word to us for a season, by our fathers, it's super important for you to be smart and watch out for the emphasis of that word. There are many words that God could send to a people by time. They could talk about mercy, they could talk about grace, they could talk about anointing, lifting, favor. That's my preference. Is it? I have to see you. <laughs> Different things. But the emphasis that the Lord has sent to us in this ministry, Christ the Ministries International, is cultivating the presence of the Lord. There must be something that God has on his mind that made him to send that word to us. Could it be that we are not conscious of his presence enough? Could it be that we have jettisoned certain things that are super important in our lives and we are not paying close attention to these things? And the Lord, in his infinite message, has decided to send this word to us this minute. Glory to God. So I counsel you to be wise this period and spend time cultivating the presence of God. There's nobody in the Bible that the Lord that did any supernatural thing whom the Lord did not work with. Nobody. All of them had the presence of the Lord. All of them. You can talk about Joseph. Joseph was not a pastor. He was an administrator. But if you check Genesis chapter 39 and verse 2, the Bible says, And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Potiphar. Glory to God. The Lord is with me. Say, the Lord is with me. You didn't say it like you meant it. Somebody say it very well. You can't even say it with some boldness. Can you say it very well? (laughs) The same thing with Daniel. The same thing with Moses. He says, we are not going to leave this place if your presence will not go with us. I think that the choir, can you appreciate the choir one more time? I thought they talked about it um, this morning. I thought I overheard them say something about that. The presence of the Lord is super key, even in the life of Moses. And the same thing for all of us. And I think last teaching, I called attention to the fact that even though there is the indwelling presence of the Lord, because we are the temple of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord dwells on our inside. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16, it doesn't mean that you are aware or the tangibility of that presence is with you. So we are talking about the tangibleness. We are talking about the tangibility, the manifest or the revealed presence of God. A man must consistently carry that aura around him. When people see you, they should say, there's something about this man. There's something about this girl. It's quite unusual. Glory to God. They should even mistake you. Not mistake you because you're actually that for a man of God anywhere you go. Why shouldn't people detect that there's something unique about you? Why are you ordinary looking ordinary like every other person? You easily mingle. Nothing is catchy about you. It means even though you carry the presence of God on your inside, you know the spirit of the Lord is that manifest presence on our inside, but it's not shown to people. So that's why you have the topic cultivating the presence of God. Because that presence has to be cultivated like you are planting, like you are raising children. A child has to be educated the same way your consciousness has to be cultivated. Glory to God. I said glory to God. There is man's responsibility to this day. 
Thank you. Let me have a quick protocol. I don't know what I was wondering what was happening. Amen. So there's man's present. Ah, why is he doing? Forgive me. I see Dr. Ali back. Let me appreciate the presence of Dr. <laughs> Dr. Lai Can you appreciate Minister Dr. Lai? We recognize you, sir. Thank you, sir. Glory to God. So there's man's responsibility to this. And that's what I want to take a look at. This moment will not suffice. What I've prepared for you is like a two-hour sermon <laughs> or teaching. But I will do my best to sum it up in 20 minutes. May the Lord give you understanding. Please follow me very closely. I am not holding the faith, but I know one or two things about the presence of God. And on a daily basis, I cultivate that presence. I don't joke with it. Please listen with rapt attention and jettison all forms of distraction that will come to your mind. I plead with you like your life depends on it. Glory to God. The scripture we are given is Jeremiah chapter 29, as you can see there. So let's start from verse 11. Verse 11. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. Amen. Jeremiah, it, it's a very popular, that's 11 verse 8, it's very popular. All of us quote it. It says, For I know the thought I think towards you, said the Lord, thought of peace, and not of evil, to bring you to what? An expected end. That right there is a prophecy for somebody. It's a word for you. Don't take it as literal reading of God's word. It's a prophecy straight away for you. In fact, it is communicated voice of God that manifests his presence to somebody already. Let's look at it again. John, Toby, Titi, Dupe, James. I know the thought that I think towards you, saith the Lord. I know what I'm thinking about you. Your mind may be on your circumstances and wonder why this thing is not changing. But I know what I'm thinking about you. So the thought that I have about you, they are thoughts of peace. They are not of evil. When I tell you to do this, I know exactly why I told you to do that. That's not to bring your life down. I have reasons which are probably unknown to you for you to do these things. And then he says, I'm not looking at the process. I'm looking at the words. You are looking at the process. You are looking at how God is going to bring it to pass and what are the things that look like they are turbulent. He said, no, take your eyes off that and let your eyes be fixed on the words. Your eyes never at any moment. It's like looking onto Jesus, the author and the finisher of it. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, that is a prophecy spoken for edification. That's me of prophecy. There's another word for telling you your future, telling you your past, but this one is for telling. Speaking a word of comfort. And suddenly, that mountain of whatever you are thinking dissolves. It's just like that. So the voice of the Lord came walking in the cool of the day. And that's Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. I, I wonder whether it's hell in the morning or late in the evening. Because the cool of the day is manifested both times. Between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. And between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. So either way, it's fine. The voice of the Lord came walking. Please go there. Genesis 3 a.m. And they had the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife eat themselves. From where? So the presence of the Lord was communicated in his voice. It's also communicated in his word. And the word of the Lord came to Adam. And the word of the Lord came to Abraham. And the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. So when God's word comes to you, it's the manifest presence of God. Glory to Jesus. Go to verse 12. So it says, I know the thought I think towards you. That is Jeremiah 29. Said the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. Then it doesn't stop there because that's where people stop. Say, so there is a responsibility, there is man's side to this thing. So don't just take that one and say, Ooh, I got the word. Let's go, Lord, the glory to Jesus. Fantastic. When you do that, he tells you what next to do. He said, Then you shall call upon me. And you shall go and you shall pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. So imagine if you take verse 11 and you don't subscribe to verse 12. What happens? And that's what people do. They don't spend time praying. People don't pray. People of God don't pray. It's amazing. 
They don't come for prayer meetings. They don't, they don't, when we talk about oikodomio, they say that it is, it is too, but it is there. Emphasis verse 13. Emphasis verse 13. Everybody read verse 13. Can we take it again? So the one that is going to get to that expected end, as the Lord has prophesied, is the one that seeks and finds. Glory to Jesus. So the question is, how do you seek? How do you find? What is the meaning of this seeking? What is the meaning of this finding? You've got to. I told you last week that God likes to hide. It's like your wife. Or it's like your fiancé. When that romantic relationship begins, that constant communication, good morning, my dear. How are you? She has slept. <laughs> she has eaten. Uh, what else do you say? Where, where are you? Uh, what else do you say? I hope there's no headache. Look, that's why you are sons of Solomon in the Bible. It's a love affair. So if you leave him, he said, draw a nail to me and I will draw a nail to you. It's, it's basic. There's nothing like we, Sarah, Sarah, what will be, will be. If God, there's nothing like that in this kingdom. Your pursuing begins. And that's the pursuant that he's talking about. It's not, a, it's just that your heart longs, my soul long. There's that longing. My heart is consistently there. That's what he's saying. No matter the urgency, no matter how imagined the nature of the emergency, you still need to move on. I once told you about Peter and Jesus had come and he was coming on the water and he began to say, Jesus was looking at him until he said, help me. That, what, did he need to say that? First Samuel, chapter 3. The voice of the Lord was cast in those days. I've told you that, that voice communicates the presence. If God is not speaking to you, something, is, 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 something has gone horrid. You must hear God's voice. This is not what I wanted to preach. I told you last week I wanted to talk about the perceptions. There are body antennas that you got. The promptings that you know in your body, in your physical body that manifests God's it, it's, it's communication. That goes on like you step beside somebody and you feel like eh, you, you are in the wrong place. The Holy Spirit is communicating. I wanted to do the, but this, I don't know why. This church. The voice of the Lord was cast in those days very precious. Go to verse 4 because of time. And the Lord said, what did he say? Go, go to verse 5. I'm looking at that. Somewhere, somewhere. Go to verse 6. Whatever. It's somewhere there. It says, somewhere, somewhere. What happened to somewhere? He was sleeping. Maybe that's verse 3 or something. He was sleeping. Some of you, God does not speak to you in your sleep. I've talked about dreams. Slumbering moment and sleeping moment. There are two different times. Anyways, this voice came. The boy stood up. He went to Eli. And said, Sir, did you come? I thought God should have entered because the angel that was calling him was there next to his bed. It's, it's not that angel was not with Eli. In fact, Eli was already losing. He only had the theory, the theoretical, the, the presence was, was gone. There was a shift, there was a replacement. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. I tell you, if he did not get it right, that voice would have gone. There would be no, if Eli did not teach him at that time, to say, speak Lord for thy servant hands. That response is super key. It, it may come back 10 years after. I, I, I gave you my encounter. When I was in part four, I just gave my life to Christ. I, I went to sports complex to pray. I pray. I just saw the angel of my very tall. That angel has been changed now at the beginning of this year. I also told you. I saw that angel this long time ago, 2009, thereabout. Right there. And guess what? 
The funny me forgot about it. It took another 10 years for that to come. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Amen. She cry. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Please hold your body. Hold your body wherever. Whatever it is, hold your body. Amen. Please hold your body. Praise the Lord. Just listen. Try to hold and listen. Listen. Ten years after was when the Lord came back. 2019. The ministry was there. The calling was there. But because I was not sensitive enough, many of you God speaks, you hear him, you do not, it's gone. No matter the urgency, I can give you another one. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. Glory to God. I said glory to God. What do you have there? This was a man that jumped 40 years ago. He had the calling of God and then he jumped because the timing was not right. So he was sent to the wilderness. He was correct. He was going to be their deliverer. But it was not time for him to take that step. But he jumped. So he was sent to the wilderness. Now something happens in of verse 3. He was tending to this father-in-law's head. But something happens. He says, go to verse 2. Go to verse 2. Go to verse 2. I'm telling you, even though the people were suffering and they were waiting, if he didn't get it there, it would have been postponed again. They were already late 30 years. It was 430 years instead of 400 years. They spent 430 years. Because the time that the, the vision came into his heart was 390 years. Remaining 10 years. 30 years in the wilderness added. Young people, they like to jump. It's okay. When the Lord has mercy on you, oh yeah, I, I know what it is. I know what it is. He said, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a film of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. What is the summary of that? Something spectacular. Do you know that on a daily basis, things jump to you? Things jump at you. Sometimes, as I'm speaking right now, just a sentence leaps at you. What do you do? You brush it aside. Sometimes you are reading, I'm, I'm telling you how people miss God. I, I'm, you are looking for until you fall, or until you cry, until that is also fantastic. It happens. But you don't dictate how God manifests. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. What did he say? Everybody read verse 3. Want to go? Everybody read clear, clear voice. Want to go? Keep going. I will now do what? So the angel, you know, the angel, the angel should just have those. I mean, the people were crying. The people's response to God's presence, man's responsibility. It was when he turned that the angel spoke. Some of you in your room, you, you can't pick all these things. They look like it's it's just. Sometimes your hand burns. Sometimes like a wind passes over you. Sometimes it's like there's an appearance and it disappears. In a corner of your room. You can't pick the signal. That is your burning bush. <laughs> that, that is your burning bush. I can give you the example of Jesus. When he called the three special, so to speak, disciples. The inner caucus. Gets money, daddy. He said, Can't you tarry with me? One hour. What happens? What happens? What? It's, Tell me, I'm about to go to the cross. Ba, ba, ba. I, I thought he would do that. He went back and tapped again. The Bible says their eyes were heavy with sleep. They were sleeping. The, the people with Jesus. He came three, the third time. He says, No, 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 no. They now wanted to start praying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When problem comes, that's when the people, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but there was already a knowledge that something is coming. You, you, would, you would have known, you would have communicated it to you. You were insensitive. Everything's fine. You watch and Hollywood. When problem now can be there. Jesus, Ishabada, 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 Pastor, can you rise on the mountain for me? The urgency was there. It was an emergency situation. But he did it. He prayed himself because he could not count on those guys. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. How do you find the manifest presence of God? I put this in two categories. Number one, what are the things that you do that cultivate this presence? The meaning of the presence of the Lord is new men. It, it, it simply means face. So when you say the presence of God, we mean the face of God is turned towards you. Like I'm looking at you and that communication is taking place. The presence of God therefore means the consciousness of God. The awareness that God is there where you are. That awareness that you have is what we call the presence of God. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. So two things. Number one, the things that deplete it. Number two, the things that enhance it. Glory to Jesus. I will not be able to explain. I will just list it. Is that good? Is that good? Is that good? Okay, let's start. <laughs> Hey, don't worry, when our building is complete, we'll do, we'll do, lo- <laughs> we'll do longer. You, you will sleep, you wake up, you fall down, we lay hands on you. We say the name of Jesus, right? <laughs> ah, yeah. I will do a lot of teachings. Do a lot of, just wait until we finish that. Glory to Jesus. So, what are the things that deplete it? I'll start with the one that you don't like to talk about. 1 Corinthians 3.16 You <laughs> feel like, like I, I, I don't know But it's basic 1 Corinthians chapter 3 Verse 16 Are you there? Put it there, lack of consecration Lack of consecration So you see girls today Say I cannot be without boy He does not come They say it's a big red flag That you cannot you cannot, he forgets, he forgets me for three days. <laughs> he forgets me and is a, is, is enough evidence to sack the boy. And women are close to God, I tell you. <laughs> Some of you have been sacked because <laughs> he is with you, but you, there's nothing. He's, he's there because not going nowhere. I'll be with you forever, but you don't feel nothing. You don't feel jack. Jack, when you do like this, nothing, no power, no, no, nothing is coming from you. Aya, why are you like this, son of man? Where are you, Ada? <laughs> Lack of consecration. Maybe I can put it this way: disobedience or sin. Just the same. I, I used a nicer terminology <laughs> when I when I said lack of consecration because why, why did they now lose that presence? Eat. Some people will not come to church again because they know the things they are involved in. They can't pray again because he knows exactly what he plans to do after. Say, Don't you know that your body is the temple? Fornication. We talked about Joseph. He said that my master has committed all these things. He said, how can I do this great thing? I mean, this great wickedness and sin. That man has the consciousness. There's a consciousness. There's a knowing. There's, there's an awareness. That's why I said the presence is awareness. That it's not that I don't want to do it. The way you are pressing me, it's because there is somebody. People don't want to say we are righteous. We are, you are fantastically righteous. <laughs> I agree with you. It's correct. 
but it doesn't give you license to what? First Timothy, first Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. We call it lack of consecration. I said I want to explain, but I have to explain that one. You need to hear it. Praise the Lord. You, you are doing this, you are expecting this. Are you joking? You are, you are doing this, cons- you, 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 keep, you know you will do it tomorrow. <laughs> no, let's face it. He said, for this is the will of God. Even your what? Church, talk to me, even your what? That you should do what? It's basic. I'm not talking about giftedness or giftings. I'm talking about the presence of God. That you are, de- you want to tarry, you don't, money should not come. Let it just continue to be night. Number two, hide us. Hide us. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. Whatever you need to take away, please, hide us. And hide us are not um, Shogu and Obatala there. Fantastic idols they are. <laughs> but there are newer, fan, more fantastic <laughs> idols. I tell you, look at it now. What agreement at the temple of God with what? Your phone is your idol. Your what? Your what? Every time you are on a funny video, what happens to the presence? It's like straw. <laughs> it's like straw. You are prayed for three hours. You feel charged. Then you pick one movie like that. Hey, something. <laughs> After laughing for five minutes, you now. Hey. After sitting under the ministration of a Yoruba movie, because it's a ministration. It's a ministration. After sitting under the ministry for probably one hour, 30 minutes, you now get up. You stretch. You see, ah, ah, shabba, shabba, ah. the engine is, the, 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 the oil is empty. The fuel is gone. The thing is suddenly rusty. You are now pulling the thing. Ipru, pru, ipru, pru, pru. I tell you. I, I, I tell you what happens. Blessed is the man that walketh me not. In the, so look, it's not even just your phone alone. There are people you stay with. Who are your body the way? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you get off from that meeting because everybody you spend time with is a meeting. It's a fellowship. It's a fellowship. You get up. Oh, let us gossip and discuss. Uh, you pro, 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 pro. Hey, do you see that brother? Hey, his shoe is like, hey, did you see his hair? Hey, did you see that? That is after seven hours of prayer meeting. These things, the Holy Spirit is there. He said, don't grieve him. Don't grieve him. He's dead. Oh, I jealously guard that presence. You will know by the time you put on that video, you will see that. Ah, this tan 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 you will know but you are going to go I will be with you low I will be with you forever he has said I will never leave you low you will be continuing to do the thing I am Christians so name it idols plenty plenty he says the curse of this world they choke the world they choke the presence the, care, the pride of life. He said, These are the things that, like tongues, they march to choke. It's that. What are the things you do? Number one. Praise the Lord. Are you following? Are you following? You, you would know. Some of you from today you need to banish games in your life. <laughs> I need to say that if I am. <laughs> God is speaking to you right now. You don't need to hear. I'm, I'm telling you now. That the idol I want to take games. Some of you, it is Korean movies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when there's a problem, your solace is Korean movies. Your, that's, that's why do, your solace is there. When you want to rest or find comfort, you don't find comfort in the things of God. You find comfort in Korea. You find in Nollywood movies. This third one, she doesn't have to say. <laughs> Some of you need to banish Premier League. <laughs> Some of you 
that I've made Ronaldo your idol. Ah! <laughs> you now come to church, you say, Everybody, praise the Lord. You people, you are not responding. You are not responding. You, you just showed us where you came from. You just showed us where you came from. Because there's nobody that feels God's presence that does not respond. It, it's compelling. It, it compels you. It's not suggestive. It compels. Okay. Time is up. Glory to God. And you will grow. You will grow. You grow spiritually. You will grow. Because it says, it's delight. I mean, it, it does not stand in the council of them, but is delight. There's a replacement. It's you that you do this or you do that. I'm talking about Psalms 1. It's not by matureness. Oh, is it matureness? <laughs> it's not by that. It's not. What do you do? Number one. Psalms 27. Psalms 27 from verse 1. Psalms 27 from verse 1. Hopefully I can do this in five minutes. From verse 1. Can you carry your Bible? Are you there? The Lord. Can we read together? Want to go? The Lord is my light and my what? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Verse 2. What happens to them? They stumbled and fell. Verse 3. Keep going. Keep going. In this, will I what? When problems come, that's why you see some people cowering. Look at it now. We don't run from problems. If it, removes, if it refuses to move, you stay there. Look at it. Jesus was on that boat. That's what he taught us last week. Jesus was on that boat. And I told you, Jesus himself was going to the cross. The problem was serious. The, the cross, they were beat with Holy Spirit in him. He was a son of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon him without measure. They beat. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at it. My heart shall not fear. Do what shall rise against me. In this will I be what? Turn forward and say, keep your confidence. I know that was the time. This happened to this person. This happened to this person. I'm not going to be moved by that. And immediately I'm moved by that. I go down. Well, you don't come to church. They say, hey, but they are moved by that. I go down. Oh, the country, the country is, the day you subscribe to that, you go down. I'm coming to write communication now. You will see how Jesus bereaved the lamb He was annoyed. Go to the next verse. The next verse is our emphasis. Everybody read. Want to go? Everybody say desire. Everybody say desire. The first thing is that this desire will love her. Hiya. Have you loved before? Have you loved before? Do you have, do you have, do you have a lover in your life? You can't understand what I'm saying. If it, do you, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. May the Lord give you a lover. <laughs> I'm sorry, you can't, you can't understand. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't understand. You can't understand. If you don't have a lover, oh yes, you, you can't understand. You can't, you can't, you just you are, you are frigid. You are stiff. Hey, let, let some oil come upon you. So now you, you lose it all. Ah, yeah. Love in the air. Desire, desire. We I, I can't think. That, that's it. That's the meaning. That's how we flow with God. That's how we flow with Him. One thing we like desire that I seek after thee. Then He explains what it means. So I've talked about desire. Very key. Your, your, your heart is not long range. It's not longing. Sorry. It's not lingering. It's not panting after God. How your hair will be nice. That's what you are thinking about. The spot on your face, how you are going to remove it by one fantastic cream. That's what you are thinking about. The girl that you asked out yesterday that didn't answer you, 
What about you that they don't like that they didn't make it to work? That's what you are thinking about. The business contract you attempted that didn't seem to work out because God was actually protecting you from something. That's what you are sad about. No desire for God. In fact, you, you, you threaten God. You threaten God that out of my life if you don't. Baba. That's what you do. You are laughing. Take what I'm saying seriously. Desire. But it now shows us how to seek. What will he do? That I may what? Come on, talk to me. That I may what? I'll come to that point very shortly. But look at the next one again. To what? Everybody said Dio. Everybody said Dio. It's the mystery of meditation. And last week I, I put a chair here. Pastor, I wanted to do it, but I had to just go and do it. That conversation, it doesn't have to be that dramatic. You can be in the, in the bedroom. Do you know that? Should I tell you? Off camera. Okay, I will not say it. <laughs> it's embarrassing. In the, in the toilet. In the toilet. It, it's amazing what it tells me. What are the things you can do in the presence of your lover before we are not feeling ashamed? That kind of relationship. I don't know why I'm dwelling on this. I have seven points. Eight points. Eh? Let's round off. Number one, desire. Number two, revelations. Oh, what's the revelation? Don't leave this one. Wait, wait, wait. Go to verse five here. Yeah. Go to verse five. Let me show you something. I will not say anything. Just look at it. For in the time of trouble, do you see? Verse three talks about trouble. Verse five talks about what? Genesis 28, verse 17. Genesis 28, verse 17. Write it down. Number two, revelations. How do you find? You seek revelations or encounters. You having encounters. Hebrews chapter 12 talks about you coming to Mount Zion, right? The city of the living God. Company of angels. Spirit of just men made perfect. The blood of the covenant. Jesus the mediator. Say, you have come. That's where we are. The revelation of that is what this man had there. Go to verse 16. Go to verse 16. This is Jacob who was running away from his brother. He did not know. Verse 16. Everybody read verse 16. Want to go? And out of his sleep, keep going. So the revelation came to him where? Where? In his dreams. I, I wrote many things there. Dreams. Trance. Open vision, closed vision, burdens, urges, constraints, emotions, promptings, all of that. And you are awake out of his sleep and he said, Surely the loss in this in this, and I knew it not. Next verse, he was afraid. There's something that happens to you when you have an encounter. I pray may you have an encounter. I pray may you have an encounter. I pray again, may you have an encounter. So that the only things you are seeing are not things that your two physical eyes are seeing. That's the worst of visions. Only what your physical eyes can see. You are far gone. The next one are your imagination highs. And the third one are your spiritual highs. Number three. Right communication. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24 verse 13. Luke chapter 24 verse 13. May the Lord help me now. Time Everybody read. Want to go? And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called what? M House. Keep going. Which was in Jerusalem. About three score four long. Verse 14. And they talked together of all these things which what? Happened. Keep going. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus did what? Please tell me, what were they talking about? What were these two disciples talking about? What just happened in that time? They just crucified Jesus. So they were, ah, he go to the room. Hey, Jesus, that was what they were saying. When it's 580 or it's 6, it's 620, or, that's what they were saying. They were having conversation on the happenings in the society. So much that when Jesus showed up, there was no discerning right conversations. When you engage in this kind of bantries all day long, you lose it. You lose it. Don't join them. That's what I say. Don't join them. Let's go to verse 15. Keep 16. Go to verse 16. 
Verse 16. But their eyes were what? Holding that they should not know it. Verse 17. And he said to them, Do you see that question? Everybody read that question. One to go. That is making you say, Conversation will end me. Jesus himself was telling them that. Tell somebody and say, What conversation are you having? What are these conversations? Who is talking to you that you are always sad like this? Who is, who, who, who is talking? Who are you conversing with? That was a question. Because even Jesus, right in their presence, they were still sad. It was with them. They were sad. Communication. We can go down and see the next point. I think I'll stop there. I'll leave the other ones for Verse 30. Verse 30. Let me stop. Verse 30. Everybody read verse 30. And it came to pass. As I sat at meat, I took bread and what? And break it and what? Verse 31. What happened? What happened? What happened? Jesus was preaching to them from verse 15 to verse 30. He started preaching. Guru, 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 guru. Do you not know I should die? He should go to the vinegar. They should beat him. Do you not know that Moses said? Do you not know? Psh, not so. But at the point that he got to the table, glory to Jesus. When he got to the table, and Jesus broke the bread, what happened to the hearts? The person that had been inside them, the person that had been with them, suddenly they became aware of his words. They turned back from their journey back to Jerusalem. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands to this. That as we partake this morning in the name of Jesus, our highs are hope one. 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 Our highs are hope one in the name of Jesus. The manifest presence of God is communicated. The manifest presence of God is communicated. Thanks for listening today. If this message has strengthened your faith, ignited your passion for Christ, and motivated you to make a lasting impact in the world, kindly send in your testimonies to 091-3710-5352 or email us at cwtreasurechurch at gmail.com. We would love to connect with you. You can watch us live on Sundays and view past messages on our YouTube channel at youtube.com Christway Church Treasure House. For updates and more, please subscribe to our channels and handles on your favorite apps at underscore Treasure Church. And if you would like to support any of the church projects, please send a message to 091-3710-5352. God bless you abundantly. Have a great week.